Idaho woman's passion becomes a visitor's adventure. A snowmobile excursion leads to a high mountain getaway that anyone can rent for themselves. Plus, rub antlers with an entire herd of wild elk. Hello, welcome to Exploring Idaho. I'm Dee Sart. And I'm Roland Barris. It was Robert Frost who poetically chose the road less traveled to make all the difference in his life. And while the woman you are about to meet says her life has really never had any master plan, it has always led her up the less traveled road and to tales of great adventure. And now she is sharing those adventures and her life with visitors to her corner of the world. Tonight, we travel to the home of June Davies, high in the Teton Mountains of eastern Idaho, for a rare wintertime excursion. In the shadow of the Grand Tetons at the eastern border of Idaho lives June Davies. There was no master plan. My life has never had this big master plan. A native of England, June never planned to move to the mountain state of Idaho, or for that matter, to live in a series of Native American teepees. It grew from one teepee, um, <laughs> and then I decided, um, well, it would be nice to have a real bathroom and the closest I got was a, a smaller teepee with a clawfoot tub in there. The seed of adventure was planted at an early age for June and recently it seems good ideas find their own ways to bloom. Go, ben. Mm. I just happened to get an Alaskan Malamute as my first pet dog and uh, bred her to my second dog which was an Alaskan Malamute. Next thing I knew I had a five dog team. That was seven years ago. Seven years of doggy kisses. This is today. Hey, sweetie. Hey, sweetie. Hey, sweetie. little girl. Hey, sweetie little girl. Never one to turn down a pretty face, June has adopted dozens of sled dogs. So they've come from all over the country, and some from the local pound. <laughs> so. We've got all kinds of personalities to, to contend with and figure out. 38 personalities, to be exact. Mr. Tuckman. Tuckman's only been here a month. Huh? Tuck came from Minnesota. Shorty was a refuge dog. He doesn't quite know how to lick, but he likes smelling eyeballs. This is Fat Girl. I gave her that silly name so I wouldn't get attached to her as a puppy. The name didn't work out the way it was supposed to. They're pretty much human in my eyes. Only about five or six of them sleep inside with me every night. It gets a little crowded, but um, it lends new meaning to the term five dog night when it gets really cold. On winter mornings in the Teton Mountains, you can usually find June with a truck full of sled dogs. Okay, we try not to drag the bottom runners. Dog sledding is a great way of seeing the quiet backcountry away from the ski lifts and parking lots and all the noises of civilization. Ready, puppies? Ready. June turned to sledding years ago as a way to exercise her energetic friends. Good morning, Juno. Good morning. Good morning. Juno was found as a stray in Idaho Falls. And Heiko. Heiko's a man with an attitude. Uh, good boy. Come on. Come on. Uh, Once you've got the right combination of dogs, they'll they'll pull for the for the love of it. And I think you can see that with their excitement when they're ready to go each time. Are you ready to go? The dogs have become so good at pulling, June recently acquired a set of passenger dog sleds. With them, she offers tourists the rare opportunity to travel this scenic backcountry from the comfort of a warm, padded sled. Yeah, I've been wanting to do this forever, and I finally now get to do it. I'm so excited. Give you a hand? Yep. Oh, you, yeah, you can step, and as long as you put your feet forward, you're not going to sit on any snow. Humble girl! Humble girl! You be nice. Courtney Marvin is about to get the full treatment. Nikki, hey, good dog. When you get started, it's a little bit of a 
go, you know, you're kind of like, ooh, but then it's just, it's like you're gliding on, on a cloud or something. And, you know, and sitting in the sled is it's awesome because you're all bundled up and warm and, uh, you know, <laughs> like a little bug in a rug. It's great. In a short distance, the trail climbs up 1,000 feet. It's a tough workout for the dogs. But a relaxing ride for Courtney, who can't help but admire the team at work. It's so nice to be out here, especially on a beautiful day like this. You know, it's really quiet and peaceful and just the sound of the dogs and, you know, June, the musher, um, telling them and talking to them and stuff. It's just really neat. It's really neat. It's a nice experience. Different personalities um, of different dogs is what it's all about. You've just got to try and bring out the best of each individual dog. It's not just a, a walk in the park. Dogs. Warm enough, Courtney? Oh, yeah. Toasty. Come on. The tour runs through several miles of high mountain scenery. There's a stop along the way for lunch, where the dogs enjoy a cool break. And later, June puts her passenger in the driver's seat. The golden rule of dog mushing? Never let go of the sled. <laughs> Whatever happens. The dog. It's not what most would consider a typical afternoon ride, but then June has never chosen the common road. And for her dogs and her passengers, that has made all the difference. It's so much fun. More dogs and stronger dogs. It's, uh, it's an evolving sport for me personally, it's, as well as uh, it's a sport as a whole. Oh, God, this is, doesn't get much better than this. Come on, Sky. Good girl. Hi. Roland, that is really exploring Idaho. And June offers whole day and half day trips at very reasonable prices. It's great. Well, those animals are incredible to watch. You know, the sleds don't look gigantic. How many people can she fit in there? She has a weight limit. It's 350 pounds. So that means two average size adults or maybe one adult and two small children could go on a trip. But whatever you do, you really should prepare for adventure. It's really fun. It really does look like a neat opportunity. Exploring Idaho, we'll be right back. Still ahead, get closer than you ever dreamed to a herd of wild elk. And next, a snowmobile adventure reaches dizzying heights. Reporter Jennifer Eisenhardt travels to a Forest Service lookout and learns how you too can rent your own mountain getaway. Exploring Idaho will be right back. You no longer have to be independently wealthy to enjoy a private mountain getaway. That's right. The National Forest Service offers remote cabin rentals right here in Idaho for a price anyone can afford. Our own Jennifer Eisenhart brings us the details from Eastern Idaho. Dee and Roland, Eastern Idaho is well known for its scenic vistas and wide open terrain. And on a day like today, it's easy to understand why this corner of the state attracts travelers from around the world. For the more adventurous, a whole new world of exploration is available up here. The Forest Service has opened the doors to a unique mountain getaway. Trees candied in snow and sparkling in the high sun. Wide open spaces softened under layers of white and the peaceful sound of silence. These winter scenes are usually just a passing site for travelers driving through. But thanks to a Forest Service program in Idaho, it's now easier than ever to leave behind your visitor status and become a resident of a high mountain winter. You like your privacy, uh, like scenery, uh, kind of just explore. Uh, this is a great place to go. Oh, the snow was great today. There's, it's been warm enough that there's a base starting to form in it, and then we've probably got six inches of just the fluffy powder here on top, which makes it great. Today, Forest Service employees Jack Haddox and Steve Davis will escort us through nine miles of tree-lined trail, through open rolling meadows and steep terrain, on our way to the Bishop Mountain Lookout and Cabin. Perched atop an 8,000-foot peak, the lookout is a treasure of times past.
This is a place where a single worker stood a solitary guard over the entire forest. Welcome to Vision Mountain Lookout. Hi, here we are. This is great. It's beautiful. Yeah. Can we uh, go inside? Sure. The modest log cabin at the base of the lookout once served as home to those seasonal workers. Come on in. Here we are. Here we are. Today, the Forest Service offers the cabin to anyone looking for a quiet winter getaway. So this is the old cook stove here. The old cook stove, uh-huh. Is this wood? It's all wood. There are padded bunk beds, kitchen utensils, and cut dry firewood. But with no electricity or running water, this is not the lap of luxury. And it doesn't have to be. Just look at the scenery outside and listen to the insulated quiet of winter. The reward of a weekend at this cabin is the simple pleasure of being close to nature. I would say it's a great experience. If somebody really just wants to get away from it and just be in tune with nature and just hear quiet, uh, the, the wind in the trees, it's really great to do it. The lookout itself stands quietly in memory of those who live this solitary life. The tower is normally closed to the public, but we are allowed a brief glimpse of a view that served as the only entertainment for hours and years and dozens of forest guards. Out to the west, you can see all the way over into the, the Lemhi's and the Lost River Range. Uh, if you're looking to the east, you can see out onto the Yellowstone Plateau. And into the south, you can see all the way across the caldera. It's pretty tough to beat the view up here. Now, normally these lookouts are not open to the public. We were let up just especially to shoot the story. But, of course, the cabins are. They're available for rent year-round from the Forest Service. Well, it looks great, Jen. How much does it cost to rent one of those Forest Service cabins? It's actually not very expensive. Most of the cabins are available for rent for right around $20 a day. There are several cabins around the state of Idaho, around two dozen different cabins and they can host groups of up to 10 or 12 people. So okay. it's quite affordable. It's really not that bad. Thanks very much, Jen. Mm -hmm. And Exploring Idaho will be right back. Still ahead, how far would you hike up for one ultimate powder run down? You gotta pay the price for the good snow, you know? If you want it, you gotta go for it. Some Eastern Idaho skiers share a little known secret tucked away in the Teton Mountains. And next, nature lovers get nose to nose with a herd of wild elk. <laughs> he got me! <laughs> Exploring Idaho will be right back. It's a rare sight for most of us, but one few will forget when they witness a magnificent elk in the wild. Welcome back to Exploring Idaho. Those powerful, graceful creatures have such keen hearing that most wildlife lovers scare away elk before they ever get within sight. But an outfit out of Donnelly, Idaho, runs special excursions right into the middle of elk territory. It's a wintertime operation that places visitors nose to nose with those amazing animals. It's been said that when a pine needle drops in the forest, the eagle will see it, the bear will smell it, and the elk will hear it. An elk's keen sense of hearing has frustrated many an Idaho hunter, and it's the reason why few humans ever step within 200 yards of the animal. Let's go get Charlie fed, huh? Get the horses harnessed. Joe and Vicki Eld of Donnelly, Idaho, are two unusual exceptions. Come on, horses. Come on. Come on, peekaboo. Come on. Come on, horses. The husband and wife team run teams of draft horses into the middle of a local wintering ground. Oh, man. It's an operation that runs twice a day seven days a week and offers animal lovers the chance to get closer than they ever dreamed to a herd of wild elk. You see things, different things on every trip, uh, uh, never the same. I mean, uh, you'll, some days you'll see bulls sparring, uh, 
Uh, other times, uh, uh, cows boxing, uh, definitely all kinds of excitement. It's fun to share it with people, share this experience, because it really is unique. Today, a group of about 20 people will experience what few will ever see. We're looking forward to it. I've heard good things about it for it. quite a bit, so yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yep, right here. Does everybody have everything? Whistling and those little sounds we make to make an animal put its ears up will send the elk right out of here. So I do caution you about that. Talking and laughing will not bother them at all. And you welcome when we get down there to move on the sled a little bit. Uh, just don't, I wouldn't stand on the hay bales. They might be tippy, but okay. Well, the command for the horses to move is stand up. So when you hear me hollering, stand up. I'm talking to them. You don't need to. Stand up. The comfortable flatbed sleighs provide a nostalgic ride through aspen groves and crisp winter scenery. If you look out here on this other side, this is Gold Fork River out here. It winds around the whole bottom of the feed ground, and that's where the elk will go at nighttime to bed down. This area, called Long Valley, is popular territory. In spring, summer, and fall, dozens of herds roam the surrounding mountains. As the sleighs move closer to the wintering grounds, Joe and Vicki explain. The hay bales, which double as seats, will entice elk within inches of the guests. In fact, these daily sleigh rides amount to a feeding program, one that's designed to keep elk out of nearby cattle operations when winter food supplies are scarce. Beautiful. Look at that one. At first sight, the elk are hesitant. That's a spike right there. But it's not long before the bales of fresh alfalfa lure the elk, and they quickly overcome their natural fear. What happens is elk's natural migration is down rivers, and of course as they eat the feed source out above here, they keep working on down, and eventually they end up here. After 15 years of planned winter feeding, these elk know the drill. And as long as no one steps on the ground or tries to pet the animals, guests can get as close as they dare. This guy here, uh, he's, uh, he really doesn't mind rubbing his antlers on you, and as it happens, uh, that's how he got his nickname, Pushy. Trying to get some hay out from under his hair. <laughs> Pretty soon she's going to eat her whole entire seat. The amazing thing is that you can get this close to them, and come fall, they can be so hard to, to hunt, you know, and be so smart. Sitting this close, it is hard to remember that these are wild animals. But just when you think the elk are tame, something happens to remind you. Altogether, it is a great learning experience, especially for children. Although at times, the close proximity does have its drawbacks. <laughs> he got me. He got me. That's what we call an elk shower. Yeah. We don't charge yeah, for them. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing that is that we've really found is that the people who come out and go with us are all animal lovers. And so we all have this little thread between us of something that we all have in common. And that really makes uh, such a difference, you know, no matter where we come from. You know, we've had people from all over the world, all over the United States come. But we all have that same common thread of loving animals. And that's what makes it really special. Uh, each day you see something different. A uh, wild animal, or the, they do their things each day. And each trip is different. And it's been enjoyable. Uh, 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 having people here and uh, sharing it with them. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's so pretty. Have some A. Yeah. <laughs> it is so amazing how close they get to that sled. It really is. You see, these animals have been fed off of these sleds every winter for about 15 years, and they have developed an incredible trust, and they've never been harmed by anything off of that sled. So. It's that trust that lets them get so close. Oh, and it is the perfect trip. If you have somebody coming from out of town, what a great way to see Idaho. It really is. Thanks, Roland. And now for our Idaho puzzler. On the subject of our first story, dog sledding, do you know the terms mushers use to get an entire team of running dogs to turn a corner? 
there are two special terms for right and left. We'll have the answer when Exploring Idaho continues. If you would like more information on any of the stories you've seen in our show today, call for a copy of the Exploring Idaho Field Notes. The Field Notes contain valuable information on who to contact, where to go, and how to get there. Best of all, Exploring Idaho Field Notes are absolutely free. So pick up the phone and dial 1-800-443-2461 to receive your copy of this month's Exploring Idaho Field Notes. Be sure to request the current show number. And now the answer to our Idaho puzzler. The dog sledding terms for right and left are the same as for a team of horses, G and Ha. Mushers yell out to the lead dogs who start the turn and the other dogs follow. Other interesting mushing terms, hike means go, on by means go straight, and whoa, oh you know that one, means stop. And finally tonight, there's a gem of a ski area that is tucked away in the Teton Mountains. It's Grand Targhee, and it is a beautiful resort with some of the best powder skiing in the West. And tonight, we leave you with some scenes of the fresh, fluffy snow at Grand Targhee. It's what makes the area a favorite among hardcore powder hounds. Thanks for joining us on Exploring Idaho. Good night. Targhee's great. Today is like perfect weather and it's so awesome. The snow is perfect. This is the best place to come. They get good snow. Yeah. Okay. They get really good snow. That place over there, it's called Mary's Nipple, and if you want the, the steeps and the deeps, that's where you're gonna go.